Well, hello everyone. Today is Monday, December 16th, 2019. My name is Angela Hooper Minifield, and I am here with your HR moment from Minifield and Associates. So, as you guys know, I try to come on Facebook Live on a regular basis and share or respond to questions that I receive about different topics. And so, recently I've been getting topics uh, or questions from people, you know, who really want to focus a little bit more on the diversity in the workplace, specifically when we talk about the different generations that are present. And for many of us right now, we're having to integrate into our workforce that different dynamic of uh, millennials, right? Now, the truth of the matter is we've been working with millennials for a while. For whatever reason, I think we tend to categorize them as this uh, fresh out of college group of individuals, but technically millennials go into their 30s. Um, having said that, I also mentor, I think I've told you guys before millennials, so I also hear the conversation from that side, right? They come to me looking for assistance, mentoring, and help because they're trying to navigate us. So one, I want to give them kudos, right? Because so often I think we don't realize how difficult it is to assimilate and become a part of an existing workforce that may or may not look like you um, or think like you and feel like you. But then also for us looking to see how we touch that um, pulse with those individuals. And so the one thing, and of course, there's a lot of literature out there and a lot of things we can look for, but the one thing that resonates most with me when I hear and have conversations with young people coming into the workforce right now is that they want to feel heard. And that goes across so many areas. Now, that doesn't suggest that I didn't want to feel heard when I first entered the workforce you know, approximately 30 years ago, right? I think the bigger difference, it, the difference is at least what I'm saying, and I apologize for my phones going off behind me. It's almost time for my speakers club. But I think the bigger difference is how they respond compared to perhaps how we may have responded when such didn't happen. So a perfect example is I got a phone call today from one of my millennial mentees and they were really upset. And of course I knew they were upset one because they called me. Um, I'm finding that a lot of them, not all, you know, could care less about the talking on the phone as much, except when they want to totally be heard. And so as I was listening, the conversation went on speaking about the fact that um, they felt that their supervisor was not listening to them. And it was specifically in regards to how to train and or equip them to do the job that they've been paid to do. And so this young person was sharing with me how they were a kinesthetic learner, they're more hands on, and their supervisor continued to say, yeah, but I want you to shadow employee X. And their response was, okay, how many days do I have to do this? I want to do the job. I want to have the impact. And their exact words, which really resonated with me, is I feel like I'm not making a contribution. Many of us, and I know we've worked with people who could care less if they made a contribution. They just wanted to get paid. But this young person was so upset, and the exact words they used to me was, I feel like crying because they're not listening to me. I'm telling them how to train me. I'm telling them what works best for me and they're doing something else. So of course we went through some different behavioral uh, tendencies based on the description of the supervisor. I uh, surmise that this person was probably a high D, um, as in very direct, uh, just wants to get it done, and uh, probably thinks they're right, right? Not to suggest only Ds think they're right, we Cs do too, right? But this person is saying, I don't feel good doing this this way, I get nothing out of it. And so what we did was then, because again, with all my mentees, I try to do assessments. We talked about how to communicate what it is they wanted in the style of the person that they were speaking to. The other part of this was um, helping them to understand that they probably 
were not going to get what they wanted 100%? Because let's be honest, some of us are kind of entrenched in our ways and it takes us a little longer to be open to other ways of doing things. And so also having that conversation because again, at the end of the day, we want that person to have a realistic expectation of what's going to happen once they have a conversation. And, you know, as I thought about this, it really resonated with me because, um, you know, I'm a parent of a millennial. And I also understand that, you know, we, I at least, and most of my friends did too, we raised our kids to want to have input and we ask their opinion. We try to collaborate. We try not to be as dictatorial as perhaps our parents were. And it wasn't necessarily saying that our parents were wrong. It was just, it was a different parenting style. And so now these are the people that are in the workforce. And so if we believe as the supervisors, leaders, managers, heads of organizations, that we're going to flex uh, our way of doing things in the same manner that it was flexed with us, I think many of us are sadly mistaken. So if you want to train millennials and get them in the workplace to do the work, but also stay with the company, I just want to encourage you guys to listen to them. Ask them, you know, how do you learn best? What is, what, in what way gets the best out of you? You know, what's important to you? Be and, but the biggest part of that is do not ask those questions if you're not going to adhere to the answers given, right? So uh, there's, like I said, a lot of literature on millennials in the workplace. And of course, I have more respect for the literature that comes from the millennials, right? Um, I am telling you what my experience is. And this is, again, a way, not the way to do things. But I will tell you this. People cannot hear you until they've been heard. And so you have to figure out how to allow people to know that you've heard them. And part of hearing them is taking action on what they told you. So don't tell me you heard me and then do something different, right? And so the same thing with your team. Don't say I heard you or ask them a question and then not even consider or take into account how you can use that information for the good of the person as well as the good of the team. So. Um, I'll be ending my HR moment right now. Again, my name is Angela Hooper, Manyfield of Manyfield and Associates, because I do need to get ready for my speakers, my virtual speakers club this evening. So um, if any of you, uh, this is our last one for the year. We'll resume after the first of the year. We meet every other Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. But if you'd like to join our speakers club, just let us know. Anyway, listen to people. They cannot hear you until they've been heard. Thank you very much. Have an awesome day. Today is Monday, December 16th, 2019. Take care. Bye.